best. That's what's coming yes. next. Is the best Not word even that really, really. Technically, I know, right? We're such contrarians. That's all I ever wanted to be in life. Well, like contrarian is, and a charlatan. Is best and our favorite the same thing? Three, two, one, go. My name is Nick Murphy. I'm Mike Murphy. We are the Brothers Murph, and this is going to be the top 10 worker placement games. According to everyone, objectively, Every this list person. is the best. We've used science. If you put something in the comments saying otherwise, we will find you. I will I'll, I'll, I'll ban hammer so fast. Or what do you call it? <laughs> Drop the ban hammer? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. I'll go Thor Ragnarok <laughs> on it. JK, it's a completely subjective list. Let's get it. Let's get it out out of the way. First of all, every list is invalid because it's just like it's not going to be for everyone. But hey, these are our favorites. Every subjective list is invalid. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to have like it <laughs> invalidated. Exactly, we get a validated stamp on our videos. So worker placement, uh, the worker placement it's mechanic, mechanic where games. you are going around placing workers on a, generally a main board, sometimes your own board, but usually It'll have a certain spaces. amount of workers. Yeah, and you're placing on on action spaces to then take that action. It's different than another game like an action selection game where like these are the actions that you have, you can take one. These ones like are usually uh, there's contention for the actions like if I take this one that means it blocks that's, Mike from taking that's that one. one. Of the, that's one of the uh, separators between action selection because I'm like it literally is action selection but it's a, a lot of them communal come, yeah, thing so generally. There's a lot of usually uh, people blocking yeah. each other and things like that. There's contention for the but same yeah. resources and things. And workers can be a whole bunch of stuff. A lot of times they're like little pawns like little workers. Sometimes they're dice like dice yeah. are your workers depending on the game. And so it is by far our favorite mechanic. Uh, we talk about it constantly because it is it is just our jam. So we want to talk about our top 10. Now we want to say this is not necessarily our top 10 favorites in a row because you can kind of just watch our top 100 if you really want to see that. Probably should do that. Go ahead and watch that if you haven't watched it already. But nonetheless, these are 10 that we most of them are our favorites, but we also want to talk about some that are different, some that give something a little different, or like they're like, yeah, it's worker placement, but it's it's a little, it, you know, it's got a little, it's got, it it's got a pivot. A little? It's got a pivot, mm. you know? Mm. Yeah, things like that. Basically, uh, these will all be games that bring something to worker placement, the worker placement mechanic that um, really intrigue us, and yep. some are just like, you it's just good. straight up worker Gosh, placement that are just good. dope. So It's just tight. I think without further ado, let's get into a couple honorable mentions yes. and then our That'll top do. ten. Yeah. First honorable mention we'll say is Dinosaur Island. A lot of people were like, Ely, Ely, no. um, you know, because yeah. it's in both our top tens. The reason is is because there's there's worker placement in it, and it, I guess it technically is a worker placement game, but there's just so much more going on that it never feels like a worker placement game. It like literally is. We were kind of deciding like what to put on our list. We're like, I don't think it's a worker placement. Then you're like literally, because there's four phases in each round and literally two of them are like worker placement phases. <laughs> yeah. But like it just, it just feels like so much more than that. Know. So I don't know. For whatever so we reason, hate the game now is what we're saying. Yeah, we hate it. And it's not on this list anymore. So it's an honorable mention, but also it's a great worker placement yeah, it's game. Great. Everyone should play it because it's dope. If you like Jurassic Park and want to build your own Do world it. where people can get eaten, that's a great it's game great. for you. It's a dinosaur island. Also, another honorable mention, this is not anywhere near our favorite, but we just love it, is uh, Mintworks. Mintworks is a, a little tiny uh, game that comes in a tin, and it's a little worker placement game. It's like an Altoid tin, you know? Yeah, it, yeah, it's a little taller and Mint stuff. Tin. And it's it's great, and it's not the best game ever made, you know, it's not the cleanest, but like, if you want a worker placement game that's pretty darn decent, that you can literally put like in your pocket, Take it or like anywhere. in a purse or something like that, like, Mintworks is great. So it's not on our list, but it's a great little honorable mention. It does something different, it just micro-sizes it, Yeah. And it also keeps it still intriguing stuff in light so it kind of also serves as a nice intro to worker placement sure it works as another honorable mention but since those games are terrible it's let's get into crap. some actual good games oh they're such garbage those games but number 10 is well, it's, it's not garbage too because it's not number one it's true but it's pretty good so let's get into our number 10 right now All right, so Mintworks, we talked about a good intro worker placement game. So our number 10 here is what, in our opinion, is the best, like, intro worker placement game. Mm -hmm. The best game to get people in the mechanic of worker to placement. Kind of, yeah, introduce the concept of that mechanic. Because it's a difficult concept to teach. It can be overwhelming if you're looking yes. at a board that has a thousand options. People are like, 
I don't know where to begin. Because a lot of games you can kind of teach as you go. Yeah. But worker placement, not always, but a lot of times you can't. It's like there's 30 spaces you can go and you have to teach every single one of them because yeah. people need to know their options. And that's very overwhelming. This is a game that I think is a great, great intro to that mechanic. And that game is Everdell. Blammo. Shablam. Everdell is a great game um, by, um, I almost said Archmage Games, not Archmage, by uh, Starling Games. Archmage is a different game of theirs. <laughs> um, by Starling Games. Um, and it's a really great, beautiful production, but a really good, mm -hmm. simple, light, ultimately kind of, in my opinion, more engine builder or tableau builder Definitely. than worker placement. Um, because the worker placement is very straightforward. Yeah. It's usually just like, hey, do you want some sticks? Go right there and you'll get three sticks. It's just on the board. Yeah, if you it's want just, some pebbles, go here. It's just a resource base. Yeah, because the main focus of the game is the engine building. You have cards and they're either buildings or they're critters and you're putting them down in your city. Okay. And they all require different things to put in. Critters always require berries mm -hmm. and then buildings require either like stone or resin or, or uh, wood. wood. Yeah. And so all the worker placement spots, for the most part, are getting those resources. So you look at your cards, you're like, ooh, I want to put in this card. It costs three berries. Well, then I'm going to put my worker on the spot that gets me berries. Mm. So the worker placement is so directly tied to the card play, but the card play is... Um, the main focus of it. Yeah. So the worker placement becomes, becomes kind of an afterthought. Yeah. And it's just very easy to grasp that. I always, like, with that game, try to, like, do everything I can to not have to use any of my workers because that also will speed up the game for you. The more you use your workers, the more quickly you have to progress through the year, yeah. which might mean that, like, I end my game three or four turns before Nick it's ends true. his. And so I try, you know, the main thing is trying to play those cards to get resources in other ways, but then you have those workers you always come back to. Yeah. And so it really is just like, oh, I, I need a stone somehow. Okay, well, I'll put this guy here. And that's yeah. all you're thinking about. It's like, well, there's a stone. I'll put it right there. And yeah. so you can kind of trick people into learning some worker placement and then kind of set like, them hey, up with something that's a little like more. Did you like this aspect yeah, of this do you game? Want to do only that now? Well, let's go into a game where there's 60 spots you can go to. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's exactly. like work your way up. It's just, it's simple, it, that part of it, and it's it's kind of like a, it's a precursor, and it's a way to get the cards you want played, and it makes it easier to understand. And mm -hmm. on top of that, it's just a great game. It's wonderful. It's um, beautiful. It's, it's just good. great. I, 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 we presence. love Everdell, and it's a really great go-to, like, intro worker placement game at this point. Boom. So that's going to be our number nine, and now we're going to get into some, some or number it's ten. Number ten. Oh, man. You're so excited for nine, nine right? Because it's my number. I get to talk Let's about it. Let's get into nine, Ness. Because it's nine now. All right, so number nine is uh, a worker placement game that does something that I didn't really think was possible. They made it a worker placement game that's cooperative? Yes. Because isn't worker placement all about blocking your opponents from spaces it's kind of a yeah there's a lot of interaction in worker placement games it's like i'm going here now you can no longer get stoned yeah. and so now it can be like hey you're there but i need you to move because we're on the same team so move <laughs> and true. it also it gives you that i need to cook prosciutto you're gonna get really worried because there's a real time element in this game is kitchen rush <sighs> kitchen rush now this is a game where you have sand timers for your workers and you have different spots around a restaurant and kitchen and you're trying Which, to cook food for people can i say those are cool workers those are super cool yeah. Workers. Those because are cool workers. They directly follow with the, the real time nature. So you your workers are sand timers, and every time you go to a new space, you flip over your sand timer and you cannot move that worker until the sand runs out, which is thirty seconds. It's a very long thirty seconds. <laughs> it's the longest thirty seconds of your life. But while you're in that that whatever spot it might be, you might be able to go to the store and buy some food for the kitchen, which is gonna help Nick and everyone else. You might be able to cook uh one of your plates, you might be able to clean some dishes so you can actually put stuff on the plates, you can do all these different actions. And so it actually does work out because we're trying to coordinate our movements because there are only so many spaces. It's limited. Like and only so many worker workers, placement. too. And your workers. And so you're trying to maximize everything, and you got so this time ridiculous. crunch, you know. And so it just does a great job of making you really feel like you're in a kitchen yeah. where you're like, i got to get these orders out now. These people are going to complain. We're going to lose money. We're not going to get I a have a seafood up. salad that needs to go to table four. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, it's just like, you do some kimchi, man. Get your kimchi on the plate. You know, and it's just so fun to have a game that actually works as a co-op because the blocking, you know. It naturally goes against yeah. the mechanic of worker placement is co-op. Yeah, because like, you're like, you'd be like, well, if it's co-op, stay out of each other's way. And you're like, you can't, man. I got to cook this. Yeah. Pork. I got to cook this pork. I'm not I serving under, under, undercooked pork. Yeah, and it's great. And it's like, yeah, it's it's such an interesting game because it's it's 
work placement, great. It's co-op, great. But then on top of that, it's real time. And so it's just a lot the on. coordination and then the placing the workers and trying to not get in each other's way. But, like, you need to get what you need to get done. So you done communicate. You because know. you're making dishes. You're making risotto with, you know, this and this and this and all this kind of stuff. And, like, you need a certain plate that it needs to be on. It needs to be cooked for a certain amount of time. It needs to have certain ingredients. And all these spots are, oh, I'm going to get the ingredients, put them on here. Then I'm going to go to the oven and cook it a little bit. But they need to go to the oven again to cook it even more. Yeah. And just when we're doing this, like, this, like, waltz around yeah. each other while screaming because it's only four minutes. Yeah, it's a very quick four minutes. It's just, oh my gosh, it's tough. It's tough, but it's so much fun. It's so fun. There's a lot to think about. And then you have these periods in between the rounds where you can kind of talk and plan. And so it really does give, uh, a, it's just a great cooperative feel. Yeah. Like you, if you don't communicate, great communication, don't talk, yeah. you're not going to make it. It's just great not going to happen. It's a hard game. And um, it's just a really interesting use of those workers because now you have workers that are tied to time with the, with the sand timers. Um, that's just a, a probably the most unique worker I've ever seen in a worker placement. Probably. Like. Most of time the workers are just a pawn that says I go to this action, but the whole having to like wait and just you're just kind of like you're sometimes you're doing just like, like, staring at like uh, <laughs> you know it's just really yeah, it's, <laughs> it's just like, really really neat. So, so um, that's our number nine is Kitchen Rush. Really fun. Give it a try if you haven't. Um, there's apps and things that kind of simulate the same thing, but it's super fun to go analog yeah. with it. Oh um, yeah, it's uh, just a great tough one. That's number nine, Kitchen Rush. All right, let's get number eight, huh? Do it. Oh. <laughs> Okay, number eight. Now we're getting into the, the crap games. Get into the good sauce. Games. Sauce. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good throwback to Kitchen Rush. So this is probably, I would say, in terms of just sheer fun. Not like best game in terms of mechanics or anything like that, but just sheer, straight up fun. This is probably the tops. Yeah, 100%. Um, and this game is called The Pursuit of Happiness. It's actually Boom. another... Stronghold games. And actually another Artipia game... Um, which is also Kitchen Rush, both Stronghold and Artipia. So is this, they're actually right next to each other. Good on them. But the Pursuit of Happiness is like the game of life it, if it was a Euro game. Yes. It's like the game of life. You can go and get... Can you get kids in this? I think you can get kids. It's something you can't you get. You can start a family. Oh, yeah, you start a family. Yeah, it's not, they're not individual little kids. Yeah. But yeah, you can start relationships. You get jobs. You get uh, different hobbies. You get yeah, cool you stuff. Get you get collections do. of projects. Physical you get stamp items. collections and yeah. stuff. But it's a worker placement game where you're you're putting your workers on the main board and essentially building your life. You're like, oh, I'm gonna go get a new job. Oh, I'm gonna go get a new uh, boyfriend or a new girlfriend. You know what? I'm gonna get two boyfriends. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna it. change it up. You know? Why not? Um, I'm gonna go get a hobby. I'm gonna start like a video game collection. Oh, I'm gonna start like a. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna get a book. I'm gonna live that jacuzzi life. You know? Yeah. And you're there's all these cards out there, different projects, different jobs, different relationships. Just present options for where you want to take your life. Exactly. And all of them have benefits. All of them take different resources. So like. Some might take creativity resources. Some might take, um, what are the other ones? Um, uh, kind of influence and in how you, influence, your, your yeah, social Yeah, like circles. I have an influential job. I'm like, hello, sir. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And out. so you're placing your workers trying to get that. But like the worker placement kind of falls by the wayside. It's just a means to just live this ridiculous life mm -hmm. that you want to live. And the game is so much in the theme and in the storytelling. Like, if you're just going to play this game for the mechanics and not, like, sit there and, like, tell your own story about this ridiculous life you're living, play something else. Go play some Dry Euro. That's totally fine. Like, I like those games, too. Well, mechanically, I think it is pretty sound. Oh, no, it's totally sound. It I'm just saying, if you're playing it, like, I'm just going to play this mechanics like this. Yeah, it's like, have fun with it, man. Like, you're playing a game of life, so, like, enjoy it telling the story like, of life. why not have seven girlfriends a dog and a jacuzzi and that's it and try to make and, your life and win. die at 37 and, and that's the thing and the best part about this game is everyone dies at the end everyone so dies good. from stress and a heart attack it's great Excellent. it's Fantastic. just it's a wonderful game and it is one of the it is the most fun straight up game that I've ever played probably it's it's just because every single time everyone you get that is, with the right group man yeah Ooh. everyone is laughing everyone is having a good time because you're just living these ridiculous lives yeah. and you can make them because to me, it's like, I always want to make the most ridiculous life I can, which is not conducive to winning the game. Well, it might be. I mean, it can be, but it's kind of tough. long-term if you're, happiness, man. If you're, if, you're riding, if you're riding into like a motorcycle gang with, with four girlfriends and stuff, like you're going to live a stressful life. You yeah. might keel over. Yeah, exactly. But, but maybe it'll be but good. Maybe it'll work out. And it's just such a good game. And it's a worker placement game, which is a great mechanic. But it's the theme. It's it's the, the mechanic just just complements the theme. It just complements and, and the storytelling and it's just so, mm -hmm. so much fun. Another cool worker alert 
So you have uh, you know a certain amount of workers every turn, depending on how happy and stuff you are. But your workers are time. So not like a, an hourglass yeah. where the time moves. There's another hourglass. That's true. And if you're working a high-priced job or you have a family, you literally have to put more workers as an upkeep cost to those things. You spend more time at your job, more time at your family. You have less time for other things. And so it's just a really yeah. subtle thing. Every time you think, think about it, you're like, well, that is how life goes. Yeah. If you have all these things, you don't have much time for other stuff. Yeah, if you're well, the... you get rid of all that, so you have time for all <laughs> these other things. You can do whatever things. you want. Yeah, if you're whatever the CEO of the company at the beginning of each round, you have to put two of your workers on yeah. that card, and you don't have the round because you're like, no, time. I'm spending time doing this. Yeah. You won't get that screw, you gotta spend the time. That's true. But Pursuit of Happiness is a great game. If you like thematic games, if you want the game of life, but good, if you want to just laugh, play it. It is so yeah. much fun. Make oh it my weird, gosh. man. Make it weird. Yeah, make, make it as weird as possible. So much more fun to make it weird. Oh my gosh, I love it. Bang, boom. Alrighty, so that's, that's Pursuit of Happiness, which is number eight. Let's move on to number seven. Let's get up into it. Rana. <laughs> Okay, so our number seven is a game that's relatively new to our lives. Um, it it did crack our top 100 after, I think, just one or two plays we'd each had. And it's going to rise, I do believe. Now, this is... Uh, it's going up. I'm trying to think of, like... Like the last night. Why it's... Yeah, why it just captures us. It's Rogers of the Ganges, right. just to get right Good to call. it. Good um, This is a game that is very dice-based and on top of your workers. And the dice are going to allow you to... But you purchase things, um, activate certain spots. They're basically a standard for currency, and it's all based on what pips are showing. So high numbers can be good, low numbers can be good, depending on what you're trying to do. But then you also always have to place a worker around so the, the dice and the workers work together. They do. And I really enjoy that about it, where yeah. it's not just only workers or just only dice, but really this kind of currency blend. really is the best way to put it. Yeah. That's, a, that's a smart way of putting Because I was like, because they're not, your dice, because you have workers, and they have dice, but the dice aren't workers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess they're currency. And there currency, is actual yeah. currency in the game, but like they... <laughs> which is weird. They yeah. allow you to activate, so I don't know how you refer to it. Yeah, but, I'm know, not entirely sure. It's like if you Put in the comments the river, if you yeah. know a better way to describe it than us. But it's a game that's just really... So good. Um, got a cool theme. It's a racing game where you're trying to basically get a, a currency track and a fame track to cross paths. So you can decide if I want to do things that are going to get me a lot of fame, or if I want to do things that are going to make me a lot of money and build up kind of marketplaces yeah. for myself or whatever... Um, and it, it, it's just got a lot of different things going on and, um, it just captured me for some reason, yes. I guess because of like the, the variable kind of ways you can go about, um, yeah, because again, you have yourself. money and fame and the, you, you win if you're the first one to make them meet. Correct. And so and that's, that's instant done, like yeah. pretty much, you know? And so it's one of those things like, so one's money, one's fame. You can go all money and meet fame here or you can go all fame meet money here or you can try yeah, to go in the both. middle yeah. and so all are viable yeah there's no like strategy like this strategy is the way to go it's just like you just mm -hmm. you kind of play how you want and it's this weird balance because you always need dice to do all these things yeah. but you also need to use those dice so that's when we were playing for instance last night the last few rounds of the game, I just was using all my dice, so I'd start every round with like nothing, and then yeah. you have to spend time getting dice back, and then I can do the stuff I want. And it's kind of like this... a resource management that way with those dice. Yeah, and how and do you? It doesn't help that the game is gorgeous. It's very pretty, and a very cool uh, theme with Rajas of the Ganges, and like in a, kind of like an Indian theme and stuff. It's just it's beautiful. It's, it's cool, and it's just it's the the gameplay is different. The theme is different. It's just different and and yeah. um, and lovely. Yeah, like, it just, it, it feels a little bit different because uh, ultimately, like, you're trying to get to X amount of points, right? You're trying to get those things to cross, but the fact that you have the two tracks and you can work in different ways makes it feel like a racing game more so than, like, in, uh, you know, other games, just the first one of 30 or whatever yeah. it might be. So, um, it just gives it a different flavor, and really, other than that, I... I it's just, I don't know. It's interesting, the idea of, like, you can spend money to get, uh, to activate certain spaces. The more people have gone to a space, you're kind of blocking each other there. It makes it more expensive, which then you just slide your little currency tracker down, which takes you further away from victory, but it's kind of, you got to spend money to make money. Yeah. There's just a lot of things that are really interesting, and again, with that vibrancy of the board, um, it just makes it a super solid game. I'm yeah. excited to play it more. It's cool. That's all I got for that. This is number yeah. seven. It's, it's one of those, like, oh, it's just good. It's just you know, good, it's one man. of those. It, it's just... It's just good. Give it a shot. Um, it, it's it's great. It's a wonderful, wonderful game. Raja good. the Gandhi, solid one. Number seven. Let's get into number six. Bye. All right. Our number six is a, a, a 
new, I guess I say a new game, but I guess it's not that new. It's like six, or eight months old now. But um, but nonetheless, this game is uh, an interesting take on the worker placement where it's Stupid kind old. of worker investment, I guess is a better way. And that is a game oh. called Architects of the West Kingdom, which is by Renegade Games. Wow. Architects of the West Kingdom is a really uh, a wonderful game where you are, and some people are like, that's not a worker placement game because there's no blocking or anything like that. But you're, you're placing workers, bro. Placing workers, okay. so that's worker placement. But it but is it is a twist on it for sure. So I understand people saying totally, that. it's totally. very different. It's very different because you can't actually block people. So if I go to the quarry to get stone, Mike then can also go to the quarry to get not stone, which is fine. Not but not what a lot of the game is around, it's worker investment. So if I go to the quarry and get stone, my worker stays there. Then next turn or if on a subsequent turn later, I then go to the quarry again. I have two workers there. I'm going to get two stone. Yeah. Then if later I put a third worker there, I get three stone. Okay, and build it, up this little mini engine. Yeah, you kind of get these engines going because you need all these resources and almost everywhere you go if you have more workers at that spot you get more of something or a better version of something or you can do yeah. more actions or something like that but here's the catch there's another spot called the town center the town center you can go there and round up workers from different spots you can round up your own which means you get them back because your workers are staying on the board and you need right. to get them back or you can round up other people's workers and then send them to prison. And then they have to go to the prison and get their workers or out. Or you can just like leave them on your board, which then limits what people can do because Indeed. they don't have as many workers and force them to take actions to get their people back from you. Yeah. And, and that's where you create the blocking and the tightness and stuff. It's just like, yeah, just everyone go to any weird... place, but you're going to get rounded up you, eventually. you got to do this weird balance because you want better stuff on the spots but you know if you put three workers down there or god forbid you end up getting four down there juicy some your next turn you need to go get Too those workers juice. back because someone's going to take that juice and glug yeah. glug glug drink it straight down so juicy dude. so juicy so juicy is a new thing but it's like it's so interesting these like oh i really want more gold but like if i go there someone's going to take my people and it sucks it worse, and, and you're going. kind of like yeah it's that that like cost uh, cost and effect like uh is it worth the cost? Uh, it probably is. Yeah. It's so interesting. Yeah. And it's a really interesting take on worker placement. And that's why I like it. I think we both like it more than something um, also by the same company in the same universe, which is Raiders of the North Sea, which yeah. also has an interesting kind of unique worker placement. Yeah, and that one, you place a worker and activate that spot. And then from somewhere else on the board, you have to pick up a worker and you activate that spot. So you're doing this kind of double turn thing. Yeah. And like, that's a really... And then there's different colors of uh, people, which give you access to other places. So that's one thing I like is like Renegade Games and like this world that they're creating is that they're they're twisting up yeah. some of the, the, the worker placement, the what the idea of what a worker placement can be. And I think that's great. You yeah. know, like I love like architects, the idea that like, we always kind of refer to as a worker investment game. And um, I'm all for it. And I think it totally counts, you know, if you want to be uptight about it, man. Say Again, we've not, already invalidated this whole list at the beginning, it's, so it's, it's fine. Invalidate. Throw that validation stamp back on there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's just fun. It's doing something different. It's pushing uh, that mechanic forward yeah. um, and giving you a different look, and that's going to only be better for the hobby no matter what. So yeah. boom, Architects of the West Kingdom is our number six. Give it a try if you haven't yet. It's a lot of fun. Sorry. Quick, 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 and I am awful at it. I'm so bad <laughs> at it. Neither was very great I want to get good at it somehow. I know. I, know, it's fine. I don't know how to do that. Yeah, so that's number six, Architect of the West Kingdom. Let's get into number seven. It's five. We're going down, not up. Five. All right, number five. Nine. Dude, number five is simply Champions of Midgard. Boom, there you go. I'm not even, even going to make you wait for it. No need you to wait, Mike. Wait. We're going Blitzkrieg this second Blitzkrieg. half. Blitzkrieg. Uh, Champions of Midgard um, is a... <sighs> Probably, for my money, one of the most true uh, Euro game Amerithrash hybrids. You use worker placement to get dice to set up the second half of each round, where it's a bunch of dice chunking, chunking fighting monster stuff. Yeah. So you get really both flavors. Um, and it's something that's just really engaging and fun. I yeah. mean, you're just trying to use those your, your, your few workers you have each turn. You don't have many to... Get provisions to go on, you know, kind of great voyages to fight kind of great monsters, or you can fight the troll and draugers, and then with the expansions, uh, kind of mountain trolls right, and things like stuff. that. It's just, uh, it's it's fun, man. It's yeah, I, just, it's I don't know, fun. know what's more to say. Maybe you can speak more eloquently about it, but it's just more of a hybrid. Well, and I think that's the point. It's both like, those flavors. The interesting thing about Champions of Midgard is everyone talks about the 
dice chucking, fighting monsters. You're, yeah. go, you're, Which you're going huge... across the sea, being like, I'm gonna go find a monster. I'm gonna yeah, get I'm it. Get a dire wolf. You know, and it's and it's great, but like the worker placement part is like two thirds of the game. Like that's only the fighting monsters is only one third of the game, but that part like overshadows everything, which is not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing at all. It's actually a good thing. But it's interesting because that's that's how you sh you can really see how good the hybrid is because of the fact that the part that's actually the least of the the main parts of the game is actually more impactful and really the thing you focus on. And the worker placement's great. You're getting food, but the all the worker placement kind of the same way of Everdell in terms of like the worker placement is a means to an end for the part you really want to focus on. Yeah. Whereas, like, you want to focus on the fighting and stuff like that. So the worker placement is you getting food so that when your Vikings are traveling across the sea, they can eat stuff. Or you getting more and more warriors or warriors or dice. You know, you have axe, axe people and shield maidens and yeah. all this kind of stuff. And they have different kind of benefits to that. Yeah, benefits and certain monsters can't, you can't fight them with, like, spear people or, or you can't fight them with axe people. So, like, all the worker placement is you gearing up. For that one part, but that one part's actually a smaller part than the worker placement. Yeah, but it takes all the glory. And it's that—that's a cool, interesting balance, you know. Yeah. And and it's just—and again, like you said, it's a perfect hybrid, and a better hybrid than I think any other game yeah. that does it. I'd say you know the only thing it's missing to really push it toward a Marath Rash is like there's no minis, but you have the big chunky dice, and that they, you're those around. couldn't then be minis because you yeah. can't roll minis. You know, it's like it suck. Back. I guess I win. I don't. They they rolled on their back. What's that mean? <laughs> Does that mean I die? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, but it, like, it just, it's dice chucking good fun. Oh, it's good fun. Um, that's all set up by a very kind of normal worker placement-y thing. If I go to the meat market, you ain't going to the meat market. Yeah. Man. You know? Totally. Um, and there's all that and stuff. Really and this fun. is one of those games that, like, this is, this is why, like, our list is not, like, our favorite Worker placement games. We want because, gonna, yeah, what are like give interesting flavors for worker? Yeah, placement? this one. There's most of these games actually were higher on my list, my top 100 list than Champions of Mega. We're talking about like the most interesting like implementations and like our favorites. It's a mix of yeah. both, and this is really like the wow, what a cool way to go about this. Like you have the normal worker placement, the blocking, all that kind of stuff, but then you have this whole other part of the game that is so cool and interesting, yeah. you know, and done so well. Super. A duper fun. Uh, give it a shot if you haven't. And it's also Viking themes and stuff. So it's, it's great. You know, it's good there. And uh, great production. Yeah, it's, it's just awesome. That's our number five, man. All right. Let's go to number four. Yeah. Is that wrong with my head? What? You keep like looking up here. Is something wrong no, with my it's, head? No, this, this swoop is really good and it's distracting me. It's like okay. perfect. Just, yeah, no, it came no, up, I came know. And I'm, like, I'm like, is there f***ing like a lint in my head? No, no, I, I'm just, I'm looking at you because you're talking and then I'm like, God, that swoop is good. It's and I'm just staring up there. That's what it I was is. Doing, I, did, I did put the diva curl, then hit it, with, hit it with the big sexy hair. Ugh. Not bad. Not Clutch. bad. All right, number four. Number four is is a great worker placement game, as I'm sure you can figure out by now. But this one, this one is at this point because the theme is so much fun and so well implemented. And that is a game called The Prodigal's Club. Word, word up. Got cam, yeah, word up. Um, <laughs> weird reference there. Um, it's so good 90s SNL reference. Ah. Sweet. Remember when Conan hosted? That was a good episode, guys. The Prodigal's Club is a great, great worker placement game. A sequel to a game called Last Will, which is also like a worker placement game. Although this one's more worker placement yeah, than definitely, Last Will. Definitely. And Prodigal's Club is better than Last Will. Um, and so, but it's a game where you're essentially trying to be the biggest D-bag you possibly can. Any way you can. You are trying, You the, the theme of the game is you realize that it's way more fun to be poor and do whatever you want than it is to be rich and have yeah. to follow all these well, guidelines if you think i guess about it, architects of the west kingdom it's like if you're poor and stuff and you're some dirt bag you don't have to pay taxes and like it's that's true sweet. <laughs> it's kind of nice saying. for the prodigal's club so you were trying to do essentially do three things you were trying to lose all your friends yeah you were trying to lose all your money oh yeah and you're trying to lose an election yeah and it kind of has uh what is generally considered like the kinesia mechanic where you have these three things losing friends losing money losing elections and whatever your highest score is, mm. that's your score for the game in those three things. And you so want a low score. You want a low score. You want to have no friends or no money. And so basically that that's the, the point of the game. But the thing is you can't then just focus on one thing. This is a game that really shows good balance in terms yeah. of a game where you have 
plates that are spinning. You got to sit here and like try and get them all going. And it seems so impossible when you're playing. You're like, there's no way. Because you're only playing like five rounds. You don't have that many actions. It's, it's like, there's, yeah, excruciating. It hurts, man. But then on top of that, the theme is so, what keeps you going, because this is a game where you could get bogged down by how hopeless everything is. And just, because it's a, it's a relatively heavy game. And mm. you can just get like, oh my God, oh my God. But then the theme is what goes like, oh yeah, but this is so ridiculous. Because yeah. like, I'm getting hammered going into Hyde Park and being like, hey! Yeah. Get Listen. rid of all the redheads. <laughs> get rid of them. Like, you know what? Mallards, because they're the voting. redheads of ducks. <laughs> ducks. Get rid of all ducks. Why is their head so different than the rest of them? Get rid of them. <laughs> Everyone's like, I'm not voting for that guy. And you're like, good, good. You know, and so it's like. All part of the plan. It's like, kind of like Pursuit of Happiness. You just get into the theme. And that's what keeps it. <laughs> Fun and keeps yeah. you going in a game a that's like about. <laughs> that's tough and thinky yeah. and such a good good um, example of any game. I work a placement of like the balance, having yeah. to balance so many different things, and and it's just great. It's so great. It's really fun. It's really interesting. And like inevitably, you're gonna put on a turn or two where like you just get a lot done. You, you find a way. Done. You yeah. find a way <laughs> to just ruin your life. <laughs> It's fantastic. Um, it's yeah. It's just one of the most interesting themes ever. The whole anti-win theme, you know. It's so weird. It's there's just nothing quite like it. It's fantastic. Uh, I love it. I really do love it. I always think I don't as much as I do. Then we play it. and I'm like, God, it really is so good, you mm -hmm. know. But it's like it's heavy too. Yeah. It's like you got to be ready to go there to be terrible. <laughs> you got to be ready to be all right. Horrible. <laughs> Say mean stuff to grandma. You got to be sure. ready. Okay? It's true. Um, but yeah, Progress Club is just super interesting. It takes some of the frustrating bits from Last Will, which is, is also really good in its yeah. way, but it has just, it's not even bad, it's just weirdness, yeah. and smooths some of that out, it gets rid and of adds game. more to yeah. it, and uh, it's a great game. So, Progress Club, that's number four, y'all. Four. Dang. Let's do number three. Three. Dang. <laughs> Okay, so number three. Um, this game, whew, it's got it right there. First of all, let's talk about art. Uh, uh, theme, fantastic. Talking fantastic. about the theater that very much speaks to us. This game is brutal in that a good worker placement game um, is going to, I think, a lot of times come down to, I need to do ten things, I'm only going to get to do three. That's like the base is a lot of it, yeah. Yeah, you know, in this game, I think more than this game, any... I need to do 32 things. Yeah. I can do two. Uh, and it's two, and you're not going to be able to pay your people at the end exactly. anyway. This game is Shakespeare. So Shakespeare is a game that I, I feel like we talk about and we evangelize a lot. Of evangelism um, this game is incredible because you're trying to put on a play for the queen, and you want to put on the most prestigious play. Um, and you got to make your play good. But the problem is, is you got to pay if you want to make your play good. And you it's hard to make money in the theater. Trust me, it's really hard. Um, a little too real? Yeah. So, you know, there's different things you can do. You can get the best actors. You can costume those actors. You can build a great set. Or you can choose only a set and not dress your actors. You're like, we don't need it. The script is good enough. Oh, wait, I forgot the script. Let's work on Act 3. Acts 1 and 2. Forget them. You know what I mean? You don't have much you can do. And the thing I like about it is that anytime that you're limited, it's self-imposed. Yes. You know what I mean? Because you... <laughs> There's this bidding for actions mechanic yeah. where before you go, you have a potentially five actions you can take. You're going to choose how many you're going to use, and the lower you go, the higher turn yeah. priority you have. Whoever bids the least amount of workers gets to go first. Yeah, and that which first is important. It's huge because if you're first and you have like a great seamstress, you might snatch up all the costume bits. Yeah, and and that for that round, that's and I'm it. like, too, who's who's down to go outside in their underwear? Cause yeah, you're because you're going on stage in your underwear because he took all the costumes. Business, you know, and he's I mean? just like, look at my costume. Yeah, and so that's a big thing is being able to go first, but then you now have less things you can mm -hmm. do. But you can't blame anyone but yourself because you chose to do that, you know. And it's like it's just oh, it's so good. It just hurts. Yeah. But and you, you it's like, well, you did, you chose this, and that's fantastic. And if, it's, and if it seems a little too brutal, it isn't. I swear, it's 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 deliciously excruciating. Yes, you but want that. If you want a little bit of alleviation, you can get the backstage expansion, which is a, a, just honestly, it's a deck of cards. It is talk about bang for your buck expansions for like small to how much effect. This is huge. We should it's, do a list on that because yeah, I don't really know should. of an expansion that 
is so little and so impactful. Exactly. So now there's a backstage. People backstage, there's like, you know, there's like line readers. If you help you out with your lines, there's like a barkeep back there before you get hammered. But essentially, whatever um, whatever workers you don't bid for your main action phase, the ones you leave behind, you can then use in the backstage. Yeah. So then it's nice because then it incentivizes you like, well, if I only bid two workers, I'll get to go first. But then I have three people that I can use for the backstage. And, and the so, backstage often is like, if you put one worker here, you get this. But if you put two or three, you get a better thing. Exactly. So now there's a lot more to think about. But it doesn't like open up the game too much. No, but it kind of rounds it out a little, a little bit, bit. And it's just like, but even without that, Shakespeare is oh, so, so good. Fantastic. But yeah, if you like them, man, it's, you need, I need 10 things, I can do one. This is the jam. Yeah. It's fantastic. Um, it, yeah, everyone should give it a try. And the art um, on all the cards, the actors are different characters from Shakespeare's works are just like so well done. Um, it's just a gorgeous game. Um, give it a try. I mean, as you know, we talk about it a lot. It's just fantastic. It's just brutal. You're not going to get nearly enough stuff done. And like, that's just kind of how the theater is, man. It's like, it's all duct tape, man. Broadway, Hamilton, it's all duct tape. It's okay? True. All the way down to Amateur Theater, it's all duct tape. And that is in this game, man. It's exactly. like, I can't do everything I need. Exactly. Love it. <sighs> Should we get number two? Let's do number two. Number two. All right, so now we're just getting into straight up our favorites. Getting into that. There's, there's not necessarily like this is because of this. It's just the jam. Number two is A Feast for Odin. Blammo. A Feast for Odin was my number three game of all time. His number one game of all time. Rounds out to number two. And yes, there is a game that's higher than that. Yeah. Um, uh, but Feast for Odin is the epitome of like, just do whatever you want, man. Yeah. <laughs> just it's like, like, it's so open. <laughs> it's so, which is a complaint that, for like, some it's... people. Our good friend Dan Hughes didn't like it because there's no guide. There's no like, hey, you might want to do this. There is literally 60 spots you can put your workers. And all are no, viable. And all viable. No guidance at all. You're like, okay, I want to go here. I'm going to create animals. I'm going to breed animals. And then I'm going to go pillaging. And that's all I'm going to do. Yeah. That's a viable strategy. You're like, you know what? I'm just going to do this. I'm going to try to upgrade these things. That's a viable. There's so, every strategy from the most part I can tell is pretty viable and but it there's no guidance. It's just like do whatever. Yeah. And so this is a tough game for people to get into because totally when we're teaching, I'm just kind of like I literally tell them to focus on like one or two things, but I'm like do whatever and yeah. enjoy, enjoy the trying stuff out part of it because that's the best part for me. It's like I'm just gonna try do this strategy different. and see if it works. Yeah. It usually doesn't, but like I just want to see if it happens, you know. Yeah. And and that's the fun of the game to me. Yeah. It's uh. This is a game I would never start someone with. No. I would I'd killing. be like, hey, you like worker placement games? Okay, let's try this now. You know how they go. You kinda know that's a little bit of a bear to explain. Okay, cool, cool. Now we'll try it. Um But if you can get into the idea of having a million and one options and then all be viable and just trying to see how you can work them together. And like there are times where even in that where Nick goes right where I'm going, like, God. Like yeah, there's I no blocking. Go. There I still that is. fish, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? That fish, dude. Uh, and so it creates a challenge in a different way. Instead of it being too tight, it's so open. You sometimes kind of like, I I don't know what direction to go. And I, I, I'm excited about that. And there's also the idea of like, if you want really cool stuff, you have to put more workers mm -hmm. there. And so it's like, do I want to do five or six different things this turn or I want to do two or three yeah. more powerful things. Because the whole work place board set on columns. Like the first yeah. column, you have to put one worker to go there. Second column, two workers, three workers, four workers. They get better. Yeah. But even at the very end of the game where you have 13 workers, you're like, uh, if I use four, that's, that's, a, that's chunk, a, man. a third of your people are gone. It's yeah. like, that's a lot, you know? Yeah. It's like, and this is kind of, it's weird because this is kind of the complete antithesis of, uh, uh, the complete opposite of Shakespeare. With Shakespeare, it's like you have like two options. That's all. Whereas here, the struggle and the excruciating part is having so many options. Especially How do you in the maximize in the later rounds of the game. You're like, which one do I choose? Like, I could do this and that's good, or I could do this and yeah. that's also good. And like, which one is better? And so it can get really hard because it's so open. Where Shakespeare is kind of the exact opposite, yeah. which is interesting. You know, yeah, and I think both are totally valid. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they give such different feels. Um, that's why we own both because I, I might want that tight, 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 you know, um, feel, or I might want something where the world's your oyster. Yeah. And you figure out how to shuck it, man. Shuck that. Um, it's a spot on the board. But yeah, Feast Road is just just some guy just going like. <sighs> um, You're just like. 
<laughs> There's lemon squeeze on there. That's kind of cool, but all right. Uh, yeah. Anyway, Feast Road is just fantastic. Um, it's yeah. You can just keep exploring it forever. Uh, especially like worker placement. Like me, I'm a glutton, man. If, if a new Avengers trailer comes out, Nick, you know what I'm doing? It mm. watching it right now. You know what I'm doing after? What? Watching it again. <laughs> I want mo. I want mo. Okay, <laughs> Beast Road, give me that mo that That's I want. True. Okay, That's true. so so good. Um, but it's not number one. It's not number one. It's not number one. Let's get in number one. Let's get a toss. My number. One. If you know us at all, you probably don't know what it is. But hey, they don't know. <laughs> they don't, they know. don't know. You don't. You don't know where we're going. But if you do, it's fine. Watch. Watch it anyway. Just, don't. Let's get to number one. <laughs> All right, so there is a number one. Shocker. It's Viticulture. It is. Yeah. Now, again, Feast for Odin was your three, my three, your one, but Viticulture was my one, your two. <laughs> so if you add both together, it's like four, they're both and then three. So, you know, four and three and a half. It's shoot out. <laughs> exactly. And also, Viticulture for me was two, two years in a row. It is True. solidly there. Um, <sighs> Why? You know, thanks for watching our top ten, guys. Uh, you tell us why. Viticulture is a fantastic game where you're running a vineyard. Indeed. Um, as non-drinkers, we don't drink at all. You might think, why? Because, like, it's still fun to, like, think of how you'd run your business. And in this game, this game is all about, I need to do step one, two, three, four, so I can get to five. Yeah. Which is going to get me the points. So it's this big kind of puzzle of, you know, you got to plant some vines and stuff. And then you got to harvest. And then you got to get some juice going and get your wines. But you might need to age up those wines. And you can build structures to help you out. So there's just, like, a lot of different ways you can work your vineyard um, to get these points. And I... I, I I, I'm not, I don't know quite why it grabs us so much. No, I it's don't know just either. an interesting theme that um, Yeah, for sure. It's works. different. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and it's the same with me. It's it's my favorite game. It's your second favorite game. Yeah. It's like, for me last year, it was two, and then it's moved to one. Right. And so it's just it's like... It's been a presence what, for a while. What grabbed me? Because again, the game was like, I, I this game grabbed me before we'd even played it. I just saw the cover, saw the board, like, and was I'm like, gonna... I need to play this. Yeah. And it was just... I don't know what it is. It's just the way... I, I know I like the engine building of it. Again, the whole like, do this, 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 this. So then you can finally do this. I like yeah. those kind of like building your engines to do it. But I don't know. There's just an elegance, a charm about it. About like just running a vineyard and you're going here and you're planting vines. But then you're harvesting them into, into juice. Mm -hmm. And then you're turning your juice into wine. And then you're aging it. Because this person wants a really, really aged nice sparkling wine so you got to wait for it to get to that we need to level. have the proper infrastructure you gotta have sellers that can hold yeah, these things and it's just so you really got to do a lot balancing everything of like your money and trying to build the structures you need to do to try to get like visitors that are coming to your your vineyard and trying to use them in the right times and the right ways and stuff i i, I don't honestly know why I love it so much, or why we love it so it's just much. A it's just theme, like it's from the art and everything. It's all subtle. It's like yeah. there are more vibrant games. For, um, yeah, of course. Like, but it just the Tuscany expansion helps. But even before that, like last year when we it was put those in number two, two, it was without the Tuscany expansion. Yeah. You know? and like I don't. It's I don't just really solidly know. made. Um, it self scales well with if you're playing one oh, or two yes. players, you only have the first row. For each action, if you go to three and four, you can do each action two different times. Yeah. So it self scales really well, um, and and you're going to get in each other's way. So you got that kind of blocking each other that you want in a worker placement. Um, it's a big old puzzle. Um, there's a lot of different spaces you can go to, but it's kind of broken up into seasons. So how you allocate those workers, especially in Tuscany, if you're like, I want to save some for fall, so I might skip spring entirely. Then as the game That's progresses, certain seasons it. become more important and less important. Yeah. Um, it's it's a tough one, man. It's tough. It's tough. and that's not not necessarily with viticulture. One thing I will say for worker placement games is they tend to scale well. Yes, not always, but like they tend to scale well. Um, uh, and so that's one thing about worker placement I, I will say I think draws us to it is yep. because if it's just us two, they're usually fine. Yeah. If there's more people, they're usually fine. And so it's uh, I will say that about worker placement as a whole and one of the reasons why it's our favorite mechanic is because it tends to scale well. It's just versatile. It's usually good at all player counts and the only real downside you can say to go into the higher player counts is it's going to add time. Yeah. But like in terms of what's on the board and stuff, like Viticulture at six is is the same experience as it is as at two in yeah. terms of the spots and everything like that. It's just going to take longer. Yeah. Totally. But, um, yeah, they're, they're fantastic, which is definitely part of why we're drawn to that mechanic. Um, but yeah, viticulture is just, 
Uh, it's just elegant in its way, yeah. um, and it's just well, a beautiful is. game that's a a fun puzzle to put together. Like I said, there's yeah. just a lot of different things kind of going on, and then the, those visitor cards and the way that you employ them really kind of take it next level. Um, and so it's just you know, it's just uh, it's just, the it's best. just great. It's just the best. I don't know what to tell you. It's just great. It's the best. Play it Get if you don't. It. It's okay, the best. Uh, it's good for all all folks, drinkers, non drinkers. Uh, people who believe in and worker in hills, placement is good for everyone in general. You yeah. know, yeah, I think it's good. You know, so let us know in the comments below what are some of your favorite worker wrong? placements. Whether or not they appeared on this list, if they didn't, if there's some worker placement games um, that we know an acronym, we know. I was just gonna say we haven't played an acronym. Yet, okay, jeez. Uh, there's some. There's some that <laughs> certainly we haven't played. So if you have suggestions for ones you think we might like, please put them in the yes, comments please. below. We'd love to hear your thoughts. And also, if you like this video, give it a share, would you? Tell some people about it. We're pushing right now for 5,000 subscribers. We are getting there. We're getting close. So a big way to do that is to help share this on your Facebook or around on your social media. Tell your friends about us if you think that they'll enjoy what we do. Indeed. We'd much appreciate it because we're going to do a giveaway when we get to that 5,000. So hopefully that comes up real soon. That's right. But yeah, so thank you so much uh, for being here. We do very, very much appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is our top 10 worker placement games. Um... I think that's pretty much it, right? That's pretty much it, everybody. Have a great day. Again, put those comments in the uh, comments area where they go. Good call. That's the only place they can go. Put them there. Good call. Put them there. We'll see you next time, folks. Cheers. Bye. Thank you for watching that video. Just wanted to let you know that we are sponsored by Restoration Games. They make wonderful, wonderful games. And everything we filmed is filmed on top of Game Toppers. Game Toppers is a great way to upgrade your gaming experience. So go to Restoration Games or Game Toppers LLC to find out more. And all that's really, really cool. But you know what's even cooler? This. That's right. I'll show you one more again. Bam. Isn't that cool? Bam. It's cool. But that's the right hand. Let's check out the left. Boom. Quack, quack, quack. Quack, 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 quack. That's right. The left is only ducks. Quack, quack. I gotta learn other spells with my left hand. Quack, quack. Ducks. Damn it. Sweet. Yeah, I, there's there's a thumbnail that I was. Yeah, I was yeah. I was joking when you were doing the thing. I was just gonna say like, what, what would be a good. Well, I was doing this one. Okay. At one point, I, I can't remember what it was, but at one point I was just like, uh, and I was holding it for a while, and then I was like, and then I was like, oh, I'll just do it again. So I'm not really sure. So yeah, let's, let's do it again, and then just kind of be like. I don't know why that's work replacement, but well, it's work replacement. Um, cool. Replace my work. One thing I think we should do, huh? One thing I think we should.